hello in this video we are going to look at how to use the program Microsoft Excel to visualize wave functions and other quantities in quantum mechanics specifically in this video it's going to be the one-dimensional particle in a box problem the formulas that we're going to show are not necessarily the most elegant way to uh, visualize these functions, but they are probably the most straightforward and easiest, particularly if one doesn't have a lot of experience with the program Microsoft Excel already. The solutions for this problem are well known as displayed on the slide. Now to make uh, graphing it easier, we are going to essentially factor out the quantity x divided by L. Since the box goes from zero to L, the values of x go from zero to L, <clears throat> we can imagine x divided by L as kind of the percent of the way through the box that we've gone, and we can see the general shape of the eigenfunctions uh, that aren't limited to a particular box size. Note also that the solutions exist for n equal 1, 2, 3, some positive integer. On a new worksheet, type in cell C1, apostrophe N1. The apostrophe lets uh, the program know that you're typing in a uh, descriptor. Uh, an alphanumeric quantity. In cell C2, just type the number 1. In cell D1, apostrophe N2. And then in cell D2, the number 2. So these are the first two eigenfunctions for the problem. Next, type apostrophe X divided by L. So this is going to be that particular quantity. is going to be in this column. In cell B5, type 0. Then in cell B6, type the formula equals B5 plus 0 0.02. And then we copy that cell B6 all the way from B6 to B55. This is going to give us the X divided by L quantities going from zero up to one. In cell C4, we're going to type apostrophe psi 1. That's the first eigenfunction. Then in cell C5, type in this formula exactly as written. Be sure to put the equal sign in front and to put the parentheses uh, in the locations shown. Then, after you've entered that, you're going to copy cell C5 from C5 down to C55. Similarly, in cell D4, you're going to type apostrophe psi 2. Type the complicated formula in uh, cell D5. That will give us the value of the eigenfunction at any particular x divided by L position. Then copy that cell D5 from D5 to D55. This will give us a list of both psi 1 and psi 2 and the values from 0 to The resulting graph will look like this. So psi 1 is when n is equal to 1. Psi 2 is when n is equal to 2. So we see the first two eigenfunctions for the one-dimensional particle in a box problem. So if you want to see the eigenfunctions for n values other than 1 and 2, all we have to do in our worksheet is just to go to the cells C2 and D2 and change those values to some other positive integer, and the graph will uh, make the corresponding changes for us.
as in this example here, where we have the eigenfunctions for n is equal to 2 and n is equal to 3. An important quantity to uh, be able to visualize is the probability density. So this is the likelihood of finding the particle at some particular region of the box. And by quantum mechanics, it's equal to psi star psi, where star psi is the complex conjugate of the wave function. Since this wave function is real, this is the same thing as multiplying the wave function by itself. So even though we can write a complicated formula for the probability density, it's much easier just to simply multiply the wave function by itself to get the probability density. So to visualize this, we're going to copy cells B4 to C55. That's a two-column stack there. And then we're going to paste to F4. We're going to copy um, psi1 star times psi1 star to uh, cell H4. That's just our label. We're going to copy the formula equals G5 times G5 to cell H5. That's just simply multiplying the value of the eigenfunction by itself. And then we copy cell H5 from H6 to H55. So here we have the probability density for the ground state, the n equals 1 uh, wave function for the particle in the box. And we see that, strangely, it has a higher probability to be kind of in the center of the box, then it ha has to be near any of the edges. So this is uh, at least the first of the quantum implications of quantization. Next, for n equals 2, we see that it tends to be either sort of the left-hand side or the right-hand side, but it has no chance at all to be exactly in the middle of the box when n is equal to 2. Now for n is equal to 3, we've actually added some labels here to show where we have nodes where the probability drops to absolutely 0. And we notice that as the n values increase, the kinetic energy increases, the number of nodes increase as well. Eventually, though, if we get to a high enough n value, this is going to start to approximate a classical distribution, where the particle has equal probabilities of being anywhere in the box. The final visualizations we want to examine here are to show that the eigenfunctions that have different eigenvalues, different values of n, are going to be orthogonal to each other. So uh, we copy cell B4 to D55, that whole group there. We paste to J4. We copy psi1 times psi2 to cell M4. We copy the formula equals K5 times L5 to cell M5. And then we can type different values in cells C2 and D2, we just want to make sure that these numbers are different from each other. And then the uh, graph that we're going to get, we're going to notice, is go going to show the orthogonality of the eigenfunctions that have different eigenvalues. If we have the same eigenvalue, we're going to get a normalized um, eigenfunction, one that would have an overall probability of 1. So here's symbology of the situation if we have the integral over all space of two eigenfunctions, if they have different indices, different eigenvalues, uh, they're going to be orthogonal. The integral is equal to zero. 
If m is equal to n, then since these are normalized eigenfunctions, the integral over all space is going to be equal to 1 in that case. Here we have the integral over all space from 0 to L of eigenfunctions where n equals 1 and n is equal to 2. So we've added color here to show that the dark gray area above the x-axis is exactly equal in area to the light gray area that's underneath the x-axis. Recall that in integrals, we treat the area above the x-axis as positive, the area under the x-axis as negative. So here we can see in, in a graphic form quite easily that these two eigenfunctions really are orthogonal. Here we do the same sort of thing, but now between the n equals 1 and n equals 3 eigenfunctions. So here's a little harder to see because of the shapes, but we notice that the dark gray area above the x-axis is exactly counterbalanced by the light gray area beneath the x-axis, showing that the overall integral is equal to 0. And our last graph to show is the orthogonality of the eigenfunctions n equals 2 and n equals 3. So here uh, we've colored things slightly differently, but to show that um, at the ends we have two large curves, which are clearly the same shape, shown in dark gray that cancel. And then inside we have two smaller uh, arcs which are colored in light gray, which also exactly cancel each other out, showing that the overall integral is equal to zero. I thank you very much for your kind attention. Stay healthy, stay safe, and as always, have a good one.